Today, I want to tell you about my ultimate escapist series of books. I'm talking wrapped up in a blanket burrito, all the comfort food spread out on the bed, phone hidden in the other room so that you can't get stressed out by Twitter, watching your favorite emotional support movie type escapist reading. Hi everyone, Rosie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I've talked a lot in the, what, six, seven, seven months now that I've had a channel about the Franny Fisher series by Carrie Greenwood. I know I've mentioned it in multiple videos, which I will link up above or down below or something in case you're interested in checking those out. But this amazing series really deserves its own video. A quick recap for those of you who might not be familiar, the Franny Fisher detective series follows Franny, who is a amateur detective in 1920s Melbourne. She's absolutely fabulous, solves crimes, of course, she's a detective, that's what they do, and just generally has a great life and these books are so much fun. I feel like they fall under the cozy mystery genre more than any other genre, but they're also not really cozy mysteries. I don't know how to describe them. You should just go read one and check it out. The first is Cocaine Blues, in case you're interested. As you can probably tell, I absolutely adore these books, and I wanted to think about them in a bit more depth, which is how this, I'm hesitating to say video essay, came about. The reason I'm hesitating to say video essay is that when I'm filming this, I very recently watched Brittany of Literarily Smitten's video essay about adultery in literature, and if that's a video essay, this is one and a half pages scrawled on a torn piece of paper while on the school bus in the morning, what can I say? That's just the type of student I've always been. But for the lack of a better word, I really wanted to make a video essay talking about what makes this series so perfectly escapist. When I think of escapist literature or escapist books, I tend to think of something more fantasy based where you're in another world or something that really just takes you away from real life altogether. And these books don't exactly do that. But when I actually want to escape from whatever I'm feeling or whatever's going on in the world and I just want to get totally enveloped in a book that's going to make me feel wonderful and safe and like there's nothing else happening, I always reach for this series. So why is that? I think the first element that really helps is that Phryne's world and Phryne's life are really a daydream of an existence. She is incredibly wealthy and she really loves the finer things in life. But not only does she love them, she actually appreciates them and the writing really leans into this. Everything is described in such great detail and you feel like the writing itself is really luxuriating in these wonderful things, not just telling you about them. But to give some examples, Franny's house is fantastic. It is, of course, incredibly luxurious and delightful and cutting edge and wonderful, but it's also comfortable and it's her home and you really feel like she enjoys living there and that it would be a nice place to live. Unlike virtually any other building I can think of from literature, when I'm reading these books, I can picture Franny's home. I can picture what these rooms look like and it makes for a very immersive reading experience. On a similar note, the food in these books is exquisite. Whether it's a fancy dinner party that Franny is hosting and has been planned in meticulous detail, or a impromptu hotel breakfast after a long night of adventuring in the countryside to solve a mystery, everything is described so delightfully and it just makes you want to eat it. <laughs> but not in a you're jealous way, like in a you're enjoying it way. This is probably more exciting for other people, but Franny also has a fabulous car, you know, the peak cool car of the 1920s type thing. And she enjoys driving it and she has so much fun with it. And I think that sense of fun and of joy really comes through to the reader. However, much more interesting in my view is the incredible amount of detail we get about Franny's clothing. Once again, she is unabashedly in love with fashion. She has loads of clothes. She has great clothes of all 
all different types. They're always fabulous, but she's also kind of practical about it. She loves herself a ball gown, but when she's going on a stakeout and crawling through the dark, she wears her sensible dark clothes with a jaunty little black beret or something. Again, these are just details I love reading about. I can see how some people might find these books overly descriptive and be going, I don't care, I don't care, get to the mystery part. But for me, having everything described so vividly really makes the world feel incredibly immersive. And of course it's fun to get totally immersed in this fabulous world, but what really takes it to the next level is that Phryne never takes it for granted. She enjoys these things so much. They make her feel lovely and fantastic and happy and she loves having them in her life, but she always appreciates them. So as the reader, you feel like you're really appreciating them as well. It honestly makes it just such an enjoyable experience to read about and I think really helps add that escaping into her world sense as opposed to reading about all the fancy things this person has but like doesn't even care about. That enjoyment and that dive into the world comes through to the reader. The next reason I enjoy diving into these books so much I think is that Phryne herself is the sort of person I daydream about being. Not just in terms of the wealth and being fabulously attractive and all of that sort of stuff. Of course, that's a standard daydream type thing. But she's also a daydream type character in terms of her true personality. As I said, she has the good fortune of having a fair bit of wealth and as a result, power, but she never loses sight of who she was or where she came from or the situation of others in the world. She very easily could have been swept up into the world of the British aristocracy in the 1920s and had a fabulous life of completely ignoring everything that's happening in the world, but that's not what she did. She continuously uses her power and her wealth to lift others up, to help people, to do good, instead of using it to hold other people down. And the reason that this works so well, I think, is that we see this through her actions. It's not really something that's explicitly stated as what she's doing. Through the books, and this is a long series, I think there's something like 21 books, we see in what she does that this is who she is as a person. We're not just told it. Another element of her personality that I really appreciate and that I think makes her ideal for me at least, is that she cares about being good and kind, but not about being nice. She is of course capable of being polite and, and she's never cruel or deliberately mean to people. All that being said, however, she cares far more about doing the right thing than she does about what people are going to think about her. And if people are going to judge her for helping someone, well she's going to help them. And forget about whoever's going to judge her, that doesn't matter. What matters is what you do. On a related note, she lives her life and doesn't care about what society says about her. Of course, she is in a position of privilege to be able to do so because of her wealth, but there is something so wonderful about reading a character who knows what she wants and sets out to get it and forget what everyone else thinks. They don't matter. She's living her life according to her rules. However, and this is the part that I think, again, really just flips it over the edge. She can do that without putting other people down. I can't think of a single instance where Phryne is judgmental or rude to someone about their life choices which might be different than hers. Unless of course their life choices are actively harming someone. She can live her incredibly ahead of the times lifestyle and still be incredibly supportive to her friends who live more traditional lives. She's a heroine who rebels against societal norms but without ever putting other women down in order to do so. To link that back to the escapism, I think it's that she is a delightful character to read from, not only in the superficial ways, but also in spending time with that sort of personality is delightful. It's really, really refreshing to spend a book reading from the point of view of someone who approaches life in this way. Not only do these books have an amazing protagonist, however, the entire cast of supporting characters is also phenomenal. And Phryne has cultivated this circle of friends and family where you feel like anyone could have a place. As I said, Phryne is super accepting. She's super accepting of other people and their life choices. And as a result, she surrounds herself with a really random group of people who are united by the fact that they fundamentally want to do good things and want to help people. They have really different skill sets. They have different backgrounds. They're from different social 
social classes. They all have different ways of contributing to these books, and they make very, very different choices in their personal lives. But they are all shown as valuable members of this group. The writing never makes you feel like one of the characters is more useful or has more to offer or is more worthwhile because of their skills. Everyone has a time to shine and everyone contributes in different ways and they're all celebrated for that. I don't usually have self-insert type fantasies about books, but this is a series where I feel like if you wanted to, you could imagine any self-insert type character and they could find a place in this circle of friends as long as they're not 100% self-centered and focused on being a dick to other people. It's just really, really delightful to read about a circle of people who feel so accepting and welcoming, and yet also close-knit. They have such strong relationships and connections, but also aren't closed off to the rest of the world. And I think that sense of community comes through to the reader. And even if I'm not imagining myself as part of this group, that sense of being welcoming and caring and interested in different people makes me as a reader feel included in the story. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I tend to think of escapism as books that help you forget about the real world problems that you might be facing or the problems that the world in general is facing. And that is not the case in these books. Instead, they do something almost better, I think. The problems of the 1920s are prominent in these books. We see racism and sexism and homophobia and poverty and all sorts of issues that people were facing in that time period and still face today. However, within the scope of these stories, we have a heroine who can fix things. Obviously, she can't fix all of society, but within each book, she can fix things for one person or for one group of people, and she can help make the world a marginally better place. So I feel like I get almost... Catharsis isn't exactly the right word for what I feel about these books, but there is something really soothing about reading a book in which a problem is acknowledged as a problem and then a solution is found. Obviously, this is no substitute for doing actual work to improve the world and to improve quality of life for people all types within the real world, but sometimes it's really nice to escape into a story where the problem exists, but someone can make a difference. And you get a bit of that feeling of being able to have made a difference in a concrete way, which again, a catharsis isn't the right word for how it feels, but you get a bit of that emotional payout that can be really difficult to get in real life because so many of these things are issues that one person can't solve easily or quickly, and one person can make an impact, but you can't fix everything. So getting that little jolt of like, things are okay, things have been resolved, can be really good. I think the final reason that they're so perfect as escapist reads for me is that they're very undemanding novels. They're fantastic, as you can tell. I think they're amazing, the stories are great, but they don't ask that much from the reader. They're very short, so they're very quick to read. They're not ones that you ever feel intimidated about picking up. The writing itself is incredibly delightful and fun and snappy and just carries you along through the book. You never struggle when you're reading them, at least in my experience. And you know going in that the story is going to be wrapped up at the end of the book. You don't have to feel like you're biting off a lot to get that feeling. You never worry when you pick one up that, oh man, am I gonna have to read the next one because there's gonna be such a cliffhanger? There's no pressure, it's just a good story. No one trait I've mentioned in this video is unique to these books. I've read a lot of books that were incredibly immersive and had great world building and really swept me up into the world, but often those tend to be longer books or slightly more challenging to read books, and sometimes you don't have the mental energy for that. Sometimes you just want something that's immersive and easy. I've I've also read other books with incredibly captivating characters and great interpersonal relationships, but often those are part of a series where one book follows directly from the next, so it's hard to dip in and out because there's always, it's following from something and going to something else and you want to read all of it. And like I said, sometimes you just want 200 pages of loveliness. So I think it's how Carrie Greenwood has combined all of these elements into the books that make them these perfect little 
portals into a world where I just feel so happy. So those are the reasons why, for me, the Franny Fisher books are the perfect escapist reads. Let me know down below, have you read these books? If yes, do you agree? Do you find them escapist or not? Have you never thought about it? If you've seen the TV show, which is also phenomenal and never read the books, I highly recommend checking them out. I think they're absolutely stunning, as you can tell. Let me know down below, what's your favorite escapist book? What do you turn to or what genre or type of book or author do you pick up when you just want to get away from the world? As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe and thank you for watching.